Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Chain Breakers. We are a Christian recovery program that focuses on the road to recovery using the 12 steps, recognizing Jesus as our higher power. We use various recovery materials, including the Bible, AA Big Book, NA Basic Text, Celebrate Recovery, and other relevant sources. The Chain Breakers experience allows you to be changed, transformed, and renewed by God working in your life. As you work and study the 12 steps and share your experience, strength, and hope with others, you will step into the future that God has planned for each one of you. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of the 12 steps, you will experience a cognitive change in your thinking. This is essential because the problem centers in our minds. The result of the spiritual awakening is sobriety and freedom from addiction. We believe that through the 12 steps and the power of Jesus Christ that we can be chain breakers. If you're not a Christian, please know that you are wanted and welcome here. We will pass the basket for donations to help pay for weekly expenses, including uh, literature and free Bibles that we give to the patients when bringing our meeting into treatment centers for H&I. If you're watching online, hello, welcome. We're so happy to have you. If you would like to donate, we'll post a link in the comment section that will take you directly to the church's uh, donation page. Please just select Chain Breakers in the fun section. Every dollar helps, and we thank you for your contributions. Whether you can donate or not, we appreciate you being with us. We encourage sponsorship. A sponsor is someone who will take you through the 12 steps. We also encourage you to get a list of phone numbers to help you build a support network. Would anyone like a uh, list of phone numbers? Would you please raise your hand? Okay. Do we have any newcomers or visitors to the group for the first time that would like to introduce themselves? Go ahead. Alfonso. Alfonso, welcome. welcome. Good to have you. Okay, welcome. If you're willing and able to be a sponsor, would you please raise your hands and keep them up for a moment? Thank you for your service. Please uh, see one of these people after the meeting if you need a sponsor. We will stop the recording that we do for our online participants to protect the anonymity of the group when we're through with the study for open share. The recording will always only be on the speakers that are comfortable breaking anonymity to protect the group. Chain Breakers is doing our best to reach people who can and cannot make it to meetings throughout this pandemic. Our last announcement is we want to make it very clear that this is not an AA or NA meeting. We're not affi affiliated with either fellowship. With many of us being members of these fellowships ourselves, we have great respect for their traditions. We endorse them. They do not endorse us. They're gracious enough to let other groups use the literature as long as the readings are kept intact, which is what we are doing. We also don't claim to be experts in the literature. We're simply sharing our experience, strength, and hope with you and the things we learned along the way. My name's Angelina, and I am an addict and an alcoholic. And my co-chair tonight is Vanessa. Hi, how are you? My name is Vanessa. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, cover. Vanessa. That's okay. right. <laughs> um, so before we get into our study here, um, I am going to ask uh, my sponsee, Melissa, to come on up here. Um, Melissa is celebrating seven years of sobriety tonight. Yes, and Melissa, she is just a testament that um, it works if you work it. She has a beautiful relationship with the Lord. Well, you got double flowers tonight, girl. That's not fair. Oh. I didn't get double flowers. <laughs> you know, and you know what the <laughs> scripture just crazy. came? Thank you. God says, I'll give you double for your trouble. That's scripture. So she gets double flowers <laughs> for the tr trouble she went through. Dude, there was some suffering. Yeah, yes. You want to just say a, a quick word? Yes. I just thank God for my salvation. Um, mm. I thank God for surrender because that's mm. like my, that's like my, what, what I did. You know, I um, I came into the meetings pretty broken. I like had two DUIs, no license. I was um, a single mom. I, I didn't have like my kids around. Like I was under the control of my ex with the kids. So there was um, a lot that I lost in my addiction. Um, but you know, when I came into the rooms desperate, that was the perfect place yeah. for me to be, let me tell you. Because Aww. when I started from the bottom, I mean, if God told me this would be my life today, I would say you're lying. Because yeah. I, I just, he just totally changed my life. And it was slow, it was be staying humble. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I stayed humble and did the work that everyone told me to do, like God just, just restored my life, you Amen. know. Amen. So, um, so yeah, so it was a lot of restoration. I mean, my life today, you know, I'm a homeowner. I got married. I have my kids with me they've been with me full time actually they just with me all the time uh, for the last three years and you know i've gained 
um, uh, stepdaughter, two other beautiful kids, like a, ha a house full of kids. Um, <laughs> like my life is beautiful today. And then I get to share this with other women too. Like I get to have beautiful sisters in recovery. Like, you know, I had a tough year during COVID, but then God gave me um, this beautiful new like family, like my sisters in recovery. And like I've gained so much and it's, it's a journey, you know, there's going to be highs and lows. But you just don't give up. You keep going. You keep God close. God has to stay number one in your life. Yeah. And no matter what, like, it's going to be hard sometimes. But you just don't give up. You just don't yeah. give up. Amen. And that's it. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Check out your Oh, Marissa, will you cut the cake and serve it? Yeah, just get a picture of it. We have oh, a cake thank and a cake you. For you. Oh, and it's gluten free. I baked oh my it myself. Gosh. <laughs> All these girls get me in the kitchen. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> lucky I haven't burned it down yet. Yet. <laughs> okay. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Just like the promises that the big bulk just you know promises us and we can see it in everybody in mm. our group you know it's I mean? so beautiful and it's funny because tonight we're going to be talking about promises yes. so uh, awesome. i think that's going to be the theme for tonight yes so yes. um we're picking up in our big book study we're on step nine in our step study series so we've been looking at it from both perspectives each step from the um fellowship of narcotics anonymous and also from alcoholics anonymous so we started we got about halfway through, so we're going to be picking up for part two of step nine tonight. Mm -hmm. So, um, Vanessa, you want to kick us off? So we're um, going to be on, if you're watching online and you would like to follow, we are going to be on page 80 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And step nine is that we may direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. So it's time to clean up the wreckage of our past. Um, so if you're watching online and you want to follow along and you have a big book, you can, it's on page 80. If not, free feel, uh, feel free to listen. You can follow along in your packets or in the big book. Um, it, I hope you grabbed a packet though, because that'll have the correlating scriptures that we'll go over. Okay. So you want to kick us off? Yeah. Sounds or good. what the chances are at the bottom there. Right. So page 80. At the bottom, the chances are that we have domestic troubles. Perhaps we, we are mixed up with women in fashion we wouldn't care to have advertised. We doubt if, in this respect, alcoholics are fundamentally much worse than other people. But drinking does complicate sex relations in the home. After a few years with an alcoholic, a wife gets worn out, resentful, and uncommunicative. How could she be anything else? The husband begins to feel lonely, sorry for himself. He commences to look around in the nightclubs or their equivalent for something besides liquor. Perhaps he is having a secret and ex exciting affair with the girl who understands. In fairness, we must say that she may understand, but what, what are we going to do about a thing like that? A man so involved often feels very remorseful at times, especially if he is married to a loyal and courageous girl who is literally going through hell for him. I like that. So here, um, you know, and in this amends process, it's given us all kinds of different um, situations in which we might owe an amends. So it makes it very um, clear cut mm -hmm. and uh, easy to understand how to make each one of these amends. And um, so now they're giving us um, examples on what to do if we acted out sexually in mm -hmm. relationship. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of us have done that, you know, when Absolutely. we're under the influence, we, I know for me, I'll speak for myself. I become a different person. Absolutely. Um, when I'm under the influence, you yes. know, and, uh, these are, it's just some of the wreckage that we do. Right. Um, and I like where it says here, the wife gets worn out, resentful and uncommunicative. Um, and I, I think that's why, and like, this was like my husband, he just didn't even talk about it anymore when I did it yet again. Because I was the queen of uh, broken I'm sorry's and broken promises. Um, and, th you know, the sad thing was that when I would say I'm sorry, I really did mean it. Right. But, um, you know, I didn't understand step one, that I had no choice right. and that this obsession didn't respond to reason. I had every reason to stop. My kids, um, my husband, 
you know, and it's funny because I had always thought before, you know, when I just get the great guy and the beautiful house and the beautiful kids, you know, then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I had the wonderful husband. Mm -hmm. I had the beautiful kids. I had the nice house and I was miserable and I still couldn't mm -hmm. stop drinking because I was always thinking, you know, it was like I had this um, gaping hole in my soul. Mm -hmm. And so I would try to fill it like what's going to complete me? What's going to complete me, you know? And I would go to men. Are you going to complete me? Are you going to complete me? Um, okay, drugs and alcohol, relationships, sex, shopping, all these things to try to fill this hole that only God could fill. Right. And right. so as long as I was looking out here for my sense of well-being, I was never going to be okay. It right. was only God could uh, fulfill that. And so what happened was I didn't understand step one. So I would literally say, I'm sorry, and I really meant it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand that I lost the power to choose whether I was going to do it again or not. And that was because of this obsession of the mind. Absolutely. And it doesn't respond to reason. Mm -hmm. So I had sufficient reason to stop, right? He was going to leave. But I did it again anyway. And I was baffled because I didn't understand what it was I suffered from. Exactly. And so he got, you know, resentful, worn out, and uncommunicative. So he didn't even want to talk about it anymore because he knew I would say I'm sorry and then I would do it again. Exactly. So what's the point of talking? And I can't blame them. Right. And I can relate to that, too, because mm -hmm. um, I had 10 years sobriety, mm -hmm. but I was dry drunk. So I didn't have a program to fall back on. So I became the codependent, uh, my ex-husband, alcoholic. Um, and I became that person, resentful. I got, became mm -hmm. so resentful towards him. And I made everything. I picked up all these character defects as a codependent. I made everything look picked. Her picture perfect on the outside, but on the inside, it was not mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. um, and then what happened was I had this void in my yeah. heart. And I was a Christian my whole entire life. You know, I had accepted Jesus at a very young age, um, but I was blocked. Mm -hmm. And that led me to an extramarital affair. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and, I was, and I did that because I was resentful towards my ex. Like, I'll show you. Right. Okay, yep. like you want to keep coming home and neighbor eat it and like not and not coming home at night. Yeah, like that's where that led to me. That was untreated alcoholism, right? Is what it was, yeah, too, right? So I had two on top of it, yeah, because so. we could be just insane sober, exactly. Yes. And I was, mm -hmm. it, I, I can't even like go back to like I look back at that time and I just praise the Lord that you know He brought me to where I am today, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, but I had to surrender mm. and I had to become humble. Right. And I, cause I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Yeah. You know? So after that whole episode, once he found out that led me right back into full blown alcoholism. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Okay. Because then I started picking up the drink right after that. Yeah. After 10 years, I picked up the drink. Right. Cause eventually we'll try like, see like with the affair, whatever it is. Yep. But eventually if we are not fulfilled exactly. with the power of God. God. We're going to want that sense of ease and comfort, comfort that comes from drugs and alcohol. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that's why it's so important that we do these action steps one through nine and then continue to live in 10 through 12 mm -hmm. um, because it keeps me in alignment with God. Absolutely. Because I have no defense against the first one. And we saw that in step one. Um, and so my only defense is a spiritual defense that comes from God. So, you know, and I have, you know, in my church family, lots of friends that, you know, throughout their you know, walk in life that have strayed from the Lord and come back. You know, I think that's normal. Mm -hmm. I don't have that luxury because if I stray from the Lord, Absolutely. I'm getting drunk. I'm getting loaded again. Yeah, so well, we I have, have to stay connected. Well, we always have the allergy. We're right. recovered. Right. To the blood of Jesus. Mm. But we always will have that allergy. So we have to be very careful not to get that to trigger that mm -hmm. allergy. So that yeah. we start, even with medicines and foods and stuff like that, I'm always telling my sponsees, you got to be very, very careful. Right. Any type of mind-altering drug yes. will take Narcotic. you back. Narcotics, too. Take narcotics. And I think that's what happened with me is that my doctor gave me Volume to take a trip. I think mm. I told yeah. you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what triggered that. Allergy. That allergy. Yes. And then slowly but surely, you know, I just came right back to alcohol. Yeah. You know? See, and that's so. why it's a hopeless condition. So we were talking about these two components, yep. right? Uh, it, uh, mm -hmm. We're kind of hitting on step one, but God knows what everyone needs to hear. So <laughs> we prayed about uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, what I suffer from is threefold. 
I have this spiritual malady. That's my normal state sober, right? And that was restless, irritable, and discontent before I ever became an addict or an alcoholic. That's why I needed that sense of ease and comfort. So when I first came into the rooms, I thought if I could just stop drinking and using, then I'll be okay. What I didn't understand that my problem wasn't the drinking and using, that became the solution to the way I felt normally when I was sober, restless, irritable, discontent, anxious, unhappy, never satisfied. Absolutely. That was me sober, right? And so the, the drinking and the drugs became my solution and it worked for a while. Yeah. Like let's, let's keep it real. It does. You know, yeah. I, everyone can identify with the pattern. This, if I was telling my story in three seconds, it would be, mm -hmm. it was fun, then fun with problems, then problems. That's it. That's my story in a nutshell. Yeah. And um, so I had to find a new solution. Yeah. Because what happened was, oh, I'll go to rehab, but I come out, but I'm still restless, irritable, and discontent. So I still need that sense of ease and comfort. So now, now I need a new sense of ease and comfort. Right? And I get that from God. Absolutely. So um, that's that spiritual malady. That's the core of the problem. And then we have the symptoms of the problem, that obsession of the mind mm -hmm. that does not respond to reason. And this is how you can diagnose yourself an alcoholic or addict. Um, and Dr. Silkworth goes into detail mm -hmm. about this um, and the big book in these beginning chapters. How you can diagnose yourself is, do I have the obsession of the mind? How can you answer that question? Have I had sufficient reason to stop in the past and truly wanted to, but did it again anyway? That is because of the obsession of the mind. It does not respond to reason. It's why we have no defense against the first one, why our willpower avails us nothing, and I've lost the power to choose. Because if I had the power to choose and my willpower was enough, that first time I ruined my life and I said, that's it, I'm never doing this again, I would have never done it again. Yeah. But I had no defense because of the obsession of the mind. So if you can identify with that, check mark obsession of the mind. The second component is this allergy, this physical allergy to mind altering substances, which is when I, when I put one in me, I have no defense against the second one. Yep. And I'm off to the races. I can never have just one. That's because of the allergy of the body and it manifests as that phenomenon of craving, which is why I can never have just one, yep. right? And so that's why it's a hopeless condition because I have a mind that tells me I can, but I have a body that can't because of the allergy. So if you have those two components, you can di diagnose yourself a real addict alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, mm -hmm. then only it's, it's only a spiritual awakening can cure sure. that. Exactly. And you know, we do get recovered. We get recovered of that obsession of the mind. Where now I no longer have the urge. I don't think about it anymore. Yeah. I've been recovered in my mind. I've been restored to sanity. But I will always have the allergy of the body, right? And so if you think about it, you know, if you found out you were allergic to peanuts as a kid and you stayed away from peanuts for 35 years, right? And then, um, you know, after that you said, okay, I'm good, I can eat peanuts again. And you ate the peanuts, would you still have that allergic reaction? Absolutely, you definitely would. This is the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? So we will always have that allergy of the body, but I get recovered from a hopeless state of mind. Absolutely. And I can stay recovered as long as I stay in fit spiritual condition. And how do I do that? by first doing those action steps one through nine, and then I continue to live in 10, 11, and 12. And that keeps me connected. Mm -hmm. And the, essentially those steps are one through nine compacted. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like this chapter about the amends, because when I saw this paragraph, it, I had so much guilt and shame and it just made me feel like, wow, I'm not the only person. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know what you mean? It's like, relief because it when someone told me you're sick, yeah. I just thought I was a bad person and I kept exactly. making bad choices. Exactly. What I didn't yeah. understand was that I was a sick person. Right. It just shows you how this disease has a pattern, not mm -hmm. just with myself, but with all of us. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. so picking back up, now you got a little uh, just on the previous steps. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever the situation, we usually have to do something about it. If we are sure our wife does not know, should we tell her? Not always, we think. If she knows in a general way that we have been wild, should we tell her in detail? Undoubtedly, we should admit our fault. She may insist on knowing all the peculiars. She may want to know who the women, woman is and where she is. We feel we ought to say to her that we have no right to involve another person. We are sorry for what we have done and God willing, it should not be repeated. So again, this goes back to we make amends except when to do so would injure them or others. So this would cause harm to her. So we don't do that just because, you know, I got to get right. So let me harm more people. No, that's not how it works. 
It's not all about always being honest. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And we don't bluntly lie, but, no. you know, we don't want to stir up more trouble. Trouble. Exactly. We're trying to, you know, make right the trouble that we cause, so we don't right. want to cause more. More than that, we cannot do. We have no right to go further, though there may be justifiable expectations exceptions and though we wish to lay down no rule of any sort we have often found this is the best course to take our design for living is not a one-way street and i love that so what is the our design right that's our action steps one through nine and then continuing to live in those maintenance steps 10 through 12 but if you think about this to have a, a design needs a designer mm -hmm. right and god is our designer Right? Any design needs a design. And this is kind of some step two stuff, but it's like, you know, when people have a hard time, you know, and it, I can understand coming in and it's like, I don't believe in God. They're saying that's my only solution. So how do I do that? And like, when you just think about it, it's like all how this world works, how the body is perfect. Every single design needs a designer. Mm -hmm. If I was looking at, you know, a television that's on, someone had to design that for it to work. Right. right. Right? And so just to get open minded that if God did it for me for you, maybe he could do it for me too. We don't have to understand everything. There's a part in the big book where it says we don't have to understand the universe. Yeah. Speak up. Yeah, oh, we don't have to understand the universe. We mm. just have to open our hearts, be willing, and turn our life over to God. That mm. is it. And let him lead. Mm -hmm. Don't make it this big thing or complicated. complicated. Yeah. You can't. You got to make it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's what I did. And I, I grew up in the church my whole life. And I just got to this point where, you know, I was trying to run my own show. Yeah. I, mean, I was trying to run my own program. And it right. just did not work. Yeah. So I had to turn to God. And when I finally did, you know, he just started putting, I call them God whispers in my life. Mm. Put Angelina in my life. He put the church in my life, guaranteed Christian growth in my, all these yes. things just started opening up. And it's just amazing because I still see God with these little God whispers. Yes. Not only with my life, but with my sponsee's life. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. So our design for living is not a one-way street. It is as good for the wife as it is for the husband. We can forget, so can she. It is better, however, that one does not needlessly name a person upon whom she can vent jealousy. So, um, and it's, what's important to know is that this whole amends process, it is biblical. All of these steps are biblical. So if you believe the Bible, mm -hmm. you would believe these 12 steps also because every single step is biblical. So um, I didn't print these out, but like two um, scriptures that came to mind was Matthew 5, 23. And it says, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift and, and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, then offer your gift. So God right here is saying, you know what? Don't even come to me until you go make it right. So this is a biblical process. And, um, and then it also says here in Romans 12, 18, to live peaceably with all. So we need to make peace with the things that we have done um, in the past, right? And then also scripture says, um, you, you must forgive if you want to be mm -hmm. forgiven. Absolutely. And I need to be forgiven. I've done a lot of stuff, right? I still do every day, you know. <laughs> but, you know, scripture says we all fall short. But I'm growing. Absolutely. But, um, you know, but I want to be forgiven. Yes. So I need to offer that same grace exactly. and forgiveness to other people. Mm -hmm. You want to pick up? Yep. All right. Perhaps there are some cases where the utmost frankness is demanded. No outsider can appraise such an intimate situation. It may, it may be that both will decide that the way of good sense and loving kindness is to let by, bygones be bygones. Each might pray about it, having the other one's happiness uppermost mm. in mind. Keep it always in sight that we are dealing with that most terrible human emotion, jealousy. Mm. Good generalship may decide that the problem be attacked on the, on the flank, which means on the other side, rather than risk a face-to-face -face combat, which mm. is a fist fight. Right. So that's what they're saying here. Like, don't go and end up in a fist fight and cause right. more harm over exactly. this right but i like this it says each might pray about it so out throughout this entire process we're seeking god throughout the whole process um we don't wait until we get to step 11 to pray mm -hmm. and meditate 
okay? Throughout this entire process, we're seeking God's guidance on it. And I like this, having the other one's ha happiness uppermost in mind, right? And they say that like alcoholism, that ism is the problem, right? Ism, I, self, me, right? And also it's that internal spiritual malady. That's my problem. And I went around, you know, in life before, you know, with this uh, broken record in my mind. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? It was all about me, right? And that's why I had no joy in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is about going from, you know, when it says selfishness, self-centeredness, that is the root of our problem. It is. Okay? So this is all about I'm completely selfish in this first step. And then by that 12th step, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, notice it doesn't say having had sobriety as a result of the steps. It doesn't say having had clean time as a result of the steps. Mm -hmm. The goal is a spiritual awakening, and then the byproduct of that is that I get to live a life clean and sober. Exactly. Right? But then it says we try to carry this message to others. Okay? So it's about going from selfishness to servanthood. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that... God, I trust you to take care of me, and I'm going to be a vessel for you and help others. Right. Right? And this is how God works through us. Absolutely. And we get relieved from that bondage Absolutely. of self. Yeah. Because it's bondage. Absolutely. And um, Angelina is my sponsor. So do you remember when we did the, my amends? And um, there was a couple of people on there, and I was, like, really resistant. Oh. And I didn't even know how I was going to get in Tell contact. that one real quick. Um, so she kept me, she talk was, up, guys okay. so up. she was totally on me, on me, uh, okay, how are we with your men's, how are we with your men's, she's a great sponsor, I love it, she's top, I love it, you know, she gets you motivated, so, and I was like, I was doing all the men's, the easy ones came first, you know, my family, who were loving and caring and everything like that, but there was just one person on there that I just did not want to make the men's to, and I didn't even know how I was going to get in touch with this person. I this is a God whisper. You know Take this. Okay. Talk with that. All right. There we go. So this is a, a God whisper that I call. So uh, one day I was uh, hurrying up, getting ready for New Year's Eve, and I go to the mall. And I'm there, like, hair up, no makeup on. Nobody's going to see me. And this is the one that she said to me, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to make that one. And I said, well, you never know. God might present an opportunity. And she's like, oh, well, I'll never see him again. So go ahead. Tell the story. So I'm in the mall. In my pajamas, so I just had a cure on top. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I feel a tap on my shoulder. And I look over, and here's the person that I need to make this amends to. I have no clue. I literally want to faint on the floor because I knew <laughs> that was God. Mm. That was God. And I thought it was going to be, like, a lot of resentment and anger, but it wasn't. It was totally, like, a nice experience. And then I winded up uh, making the arrangements to make that amends to that person. And it was so freeing. Mm. So I wound up doing my amends. So those of you, like, that's the same thing with this program. Like, you have to trust God. Mm -hmm. God is so important because... You know, like everything will start to fit like a hand in a glove. If he wants you to do something in this program and you hand over everything mm -hmm. to him, he'll present it. He will present it. That's it. So that's my God whisper. I have many others. Yeah. That was one of the ones. That was that more. That was more I like called, a God shout out. I called you right away. I'm like, you're not going <laughs> to believe think that was a whisper. this. <laughs> like, you're, you're doing this. You're doing this. Remember okay. I called you in the yes, car? Yes. Like, right afterwards. She oh, called me. You're okay. not going to believe this. I'm like, yes, I believe it. Okay, so let's Amen. see here. Amen, yes. So if we have no such comp uh, complication, there is plenty we should do at home. Sometimes we hear an alcoholic say that the only thing he needs to do is keep sober. Certainly he must keep sober. You ever hear this is, oh, it's just suggestions, right? There's must and have to and vital all throughout this process. So that doesn't sound like a suggestion to me. They also suggest that, you know, when you jump out of a plane, they pull your parachute. Uh, but if, you know, I don't do that, I'm going to die. You know, and, and this is the same thing uh, here. So we must keep sober for the, there will be no home if he doesn't. And that's what I realized, that I have to keep my sobriety first. I keep it first above, um, I'm very involved in my church, but this comes first. Um, it comes over my, my family and my kids mm -hmm. first. Because I've had the experience at just shy of five years sober and thought I could drink. And guess what? When I did that, the very first thing I stopped doing was talking to God. Because if I don't talk to you, you can't see me. 
right? And this is what I really thought, like literally like drinking, like don't look, okay? <laughs> so guess what? That, that was the, and I lost my relationship with God. So for me, me putting my sobriety first is me putting God first. Absolutely. It is me putting um, my kids first. Because if I don't, I'm going to lose it. So it has to come first. But he is yet a long way from making good to the wife or parents for whom years he has so shockingly treated. Passing all understanding as the patient mothers and wives have had with alcoholics. Had this not been so, many of us would have no homes today and would perhaps be dead. The alcoholic is like a tornado roaring his way through the lives of others. Hearts are broken, sweet relationships are dead, affections have been uprooted. Selfish and inconsiderate mm. habits have kept the home in turmoil. We feel a man is unthinking when he says that sobriety is enough. He is like the farmer who came up out of the cyclone cellar to find his home ruined. To his wife, he remarked, don't see anything the matter here, Ma. Ain't it great when the wind stopped blowing? Let me see this. Okay. And I like that where it says the alcoholic is like a tornado roaring his way through the lives of others, right? And this is an addiction either too, right? So I just go, you know, I, I do what I got to do and I take captives with me, right? I took my husband captive. I took my kids captive. I took my parents captive, my siblings, right? Because anyone that came in contact with me was getting affected. And it was like a tornado, right? And it had said previously that we need to clean up the debris. So if you think about it, when it's, if a tornado were to go through this room, there would be chairs everywhere afterwards, right? And so I need to make it right and clean up that debris mm -hmm. of the people that I hurt. Because mm -hmm. if I don't, I'm still going to have that guilt and that remorse, and Absolutely. it's going to block me off from the presence of God, and I'm going to use again. I have to make it right. Right? We clearly saw in those two scriptures that God says, look, don't even come to me until you make it right. That, that to me, mm -hmm. did, that didn't sound like a suggestion from no, God. Absolutely. Right? So um, I have to make that right. And I like where he said, Annie Grant, the wind stopped blowing. Right? And that was me. I would like destroy people's lives and be like the next day, like, hey, how you doing? Like, it's nothing. <laughs> Annie Grant, the weather. Right? Why? Because I'm in denial. I'm in denial of what I'm doing, of what I'm suffering from. And the only thing that is gonna break through that denial is truth. And we're right? selfish too. Yeah, because I'm selfish. And who is the truth? Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way. Mm -hmm. And when I just become, like am I willing to just be open-minded to go through the beginning of this process? Because if I do that, I'm gonna find out what I'm suffering from and truth is gonna break through and I'm not gonna be able to deny the problem anymore. That's why it's so important to have an open mind. Amen. So, Amen. yes, there is a long period of reconstruction ahead. We must take the lead. So, and like also, this is like a, with these family members, it's like a continual living amends. Um, and I like that. Uh, uh, we're going to look at this in a second. So, a remorsefully, uh, more, more, blah, blah, blah. remorseful mumbling that we are sorry won't fill the bill at all. So, I wrote on here... Um, it's in your packets if you want to follow along. So I want to pause here for a moment because I want to dig a little bit deeper with this amends process, right? So the big book tells us exactly what our purpose is here. We are there to make amends for the harm we have caused. We're not just there to say, I'm sorry, and sincerely. See, a remorseful mumbling won't fill the bill. So I want to look at the difference between an amends and an apology. So this is not about going to people and just saying like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. This is about making an amends, right? And there is a difference. So I have the two definitions here written down for you, right? So an amends, the definition of that is to formally compensate for the harm caused with a sincere desire to correct my behavior of the past and the future. See, so this, and this is what I said to my husband, right? To make this right, I, I promise that I'm always going to keep my recovery first mm -hmm. so that I never do this to you again. Yep. Okay, because guess what? He heard I'm sorry so many times he didn't want to hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. I had to show him through my behavior and continue to do that, okay? Action. Then an apology is a polite gesture that sometimes does not imply admission of regret or guilt, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of times it was like, I really don't want to hear you nagging me, sorry. Mm -hmm. It was insincere. So this is not about going and saying, I'm sorry. This is about making a proper amends. 
and this is how I'm going to rectify the situation for you. And what can I do to make this right? And then being willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't even use sorry anymore. Mm. I always just say I want to make an amends. Yes. Too. Right. You know, and the best part is, is that with this program, we can teach our children, mm. <laughs> you know? So when my son says, I'm sorry, I'm like, you got to show action now. So <laughs> she does. I hear her. Yeah. Coach. So um, <laughs> that's one thing about this program is that it's just, we can just implement it into our everyday lives with our, with our family and our kids. Mm. Even my relationships with my sisters and my brothers and my yeah. mom and my dad. Right. You know, it's just amazing. It's just so, it's such a blessing. Mm. It yeah. is. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's a blessing that I don't have to live wrapped up in the bondage of self anymore. Oh, no. Because it, it was. I was in chains. Exactly. Okay. So, um, and what's interesting here is that the Bible tells us multiple times to repent. And so this amends process is biblical. So the definition of repent is to turn from sin and dedicate one's life to the uh, oneself to the amendment of one's life by not repeating the behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the the biblical definition of repent to not repeat the behavior in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's an amends. That's not a remor remorseful. I'm sorry. Um, so this is not about just saying I'm sorry and then continuing to live in a way that causes harm to others, but about a sincere desire to admit and make right wrongs. A simple apology is not accepted, uh, acceptable. This is about making right what you have wronged and cleaning your side of the street regardless of how much they may have hurt you. Your talk should contain the following, and I have my sponsees write this out on an index card yep. so that it's done properly, and that's how I did it, how my sponsor had me do it. And you know, when I meet with them, again, it's not like, oh, hey, how you doing? No, this is why I'm here, right? Absolutely. Right. I am here to make amends for the harm that I caused, these are the harms I'm clear on, because let's be honest, there's probably a lot of stuff that we're not even aware that we did, right? Is there any other harm that I'm not aware of that you need to tell me about? And do you need to tell me how any of this hurt you personally? Because some people need to get that off their chest. Mm -hmm. And I need to realize that it's not about me and allow them to do that. Because if I really am sorry, I will allow that, right? I got to get ego out of the way, right? Because ego is edging God out. So I need to humble myself, mm -hmm. okay? And then the last portion should be, is there anything I can do to make this right? And if the amends is a financial amends, already go there with a payment plan in mind, and will this work for you? That so this, remember with me? So, right. Um, with, with one of my amends, um, I had owed somebody money, and um, actually it was my mom. <laughs> yeah, a lot of money. And... Um, so when I, I mean, Angelina and I talked about it and everything like that, and then I never even, like, this is how God works. I just, I go to my mom to make my amends, and I said, and I started crying. I'm like, I'm so sorry that I disappointed you. I was like, I am going to make a promise. We're going to set up a schedule for me to make payments to you. And, you know, da -da -da -da. and she turned around and she says, you don't owe me nothing. Mm. And it was a significant amount it of money. It was a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. And I just broke down. That's how God works yeah. in our lives. And I was scared to make that amount, yes. remember? Yeah. Because I was like, how am I going to do this? And you're like, it doesn't matter. You have to do it. Yeah. You have to do it. <laughs> so, but that just, the promises that God gives us in this program, is just mm. amazing. Amazing. Yes. And I want to say this, too. See, it was about, she was willing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, God will just test us to see if we're willing to follow yes. Him. And then yes. when we do, we're blessed. Exactly. He yes. just wants to see, are you willing to take up your cross and follow Him? Yeah. Right? That's what He says. And I just had a sob that was just like, it, was not a, it wasn't a sad sob. It was a sob because I knew it was a gift from God. Amen. Ooh. By relieving me from that debt. Yes. That was, I mean, I can get teared up right now because it's just amazing. Because my mom was like, you owe her a penny like if you owe her 10 or one she wants that penny like that's how my mom is so from god to work through her was amazing mm, so that's so yeah. awesome <laughs> so uh we all now we're back in our big book here we ought to sit down with the family and frankly analyze the past as we now see it being very careful not to criticize them so there's a don't and there's do's and don'ts all throughout this their defects may be glaring but the chances are that our own actions are partly responsible. So we clean house with the family. How? By making amends. Each morning in meditation, so there's my da daily step 11, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we ask that our Creator show us the way of patience, tolerance, kindness, and love. So this is how I clean house with the family. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that one, and then I'll the wash spiritually. It. Yeah. Okay. The spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live have it. Have to. Unless one's family expresses desire to live upon spiritual principles, we think we ought not to urge them. We should not talk incessantly to them about spiritual matters. They will change in time. Our behavior will convince them more than our words. We must remember that 10 or 20 years of drunkenness would make a skeptical out of anyone. Mm. Good. Let me keep going. Yeah. There may be some wrongs we can fully right. We don't worry about them if we can honestly say it, honestly say to ourselves that we would write them if we could. Some people cannot be seen. We send them an honest letter, and there may be a valid reason for postponement in some cases, but we don't delay it if it can be avoided. We should be sensible, tactful, considerate, and humble without being servile or scrapping. As God's people, we stand on our feet. We don't crawl before anyone. Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. God's people. Amen. Amen. So um, now we're coming up on these ninth step promises. I love these promises. These are the promises of recovery. These are the promises that we will receive once we have gotten halfway through with this immense process because now I've had a spiritual awakening. But here's the thing. We hear so often, right, that people want these promises, but they don't want to do the work. And a promise is a guarantee. It's a guarantee if I take these steps that these are the promises I'm going to get. But you're not going to get it if you don't do the work, right? I can want to be a doctor all day long. I want that promise to be a doctor. But guess what? If I only put in the work and go to medical school, then um, I am not going to become a doctor. Guys, do you mind just keeping it down a little bit in the back there? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Rick. Keep it down a little bit. A little, thank you. So, um... So we have to do the work if we're going to receive the promise. That's the bottom line. Um, also, keep in mind, there's promises all throughout each step. Okay? These can also be check marks. Okay? Am I experiencing this? Am I experiencing that? Because if I'm not, by that promise on that step, that's an indicator that I've missed something and I need to go back. So if you've already done this process and you're not experiencing these promises, you missed something and you need to go back. So let's see what these promises are. And they're amazing and they have been, been fulfilled in my life, I know in your life. Absolutely. So it says, if we are painstaking about this phase of our development, we will be amazed before we are halfway through. We're going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. Look at that. We're going to know it. We're not going to wish for it. We're going to know it. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. Why? Because I honestly can say this. If I could go back and change it, I wouldn't. And like when I heard people say that when I first came in, I'm like, liar, liar, liar. <laughs> okay. Um, but I really, I really, really feel that way because had I not gone through it, I wouldn't have this amazing life that I have Absolutely. today. I wouldn't have this beautiful relationship with God that I had today. I had to become desperate enough that I was willing to seek God. Amen. And um, if I didn't go through this, I know I wouldn't have done that. Mm -mm. And, you know, God took the point of my rock bottom and it gave me a platform and a purpose to help other people. And had I not gone through it, I wouldn't be able to have the immense joy that I have today. And, um, you know, and it's God's promise, too. And this is in uh, Genesis 50, that God will take what the enemy meant for harm and he'll use it for good. Absolutely. And that's a favorite promise. Verse. Yes. That's my favorite verse. Yes. Because yes. that is my life to a T and everybody's life here in recovery. Yep. Um, and here's the thing, you know, God says he's no respecter of persons. Neither is recovery. Mm -mm. I don't know. Every single person in here can have it if you're willing to do the work and if you're willing to take suggestions and if you're willing to say, okay, my way doesn't work. Right. So I just wanted to say something mm -hmm. too real quick. So where it says we are going to uh, know a new freedom and a new happiness, the awesome thing about that is that people were seeing that in me before I even saw yes. it. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So yes. like you just changed. You're like, what's well, wrong? Like, and a lot of people didn't know that I was in the program, but they were just like, something's different mm -hmm. with you. Yes. Yeah, we can pick it up. 
something's different. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So yes. that's what's amazing about this, per this yes. program. Yes. You know? so. And these promises. And the promises, yes. absolutely. And one more us. thing, too. Huh? We're late on time. Go ahead. Say your one thing. No, I want to hear it. Okay, so spiritual awakening is not this big cloud that our, our angels mm. coming out of the clouds. For me, it was little words like must, recover, mm. allergy, phenomenal craving. That was my spiritual awakening. Yeah. And to this day, every time I take this book and I look through it again, I'm, I'm seeing my spiritual awakening just pop off these pages. Mm. That's what's amazing. So yes. you don't think you're going to see this big white light, like the right. you do or right. angels. Right. It's just simple things. Keep it simple. Don't make it so complicated. Yes. And let God do everything. Yes, exactly. Right? That's the whole point of this. It, absolutely. Let God be God. Absolutely. And I need to like shut up and take the cotton right out <laughs> yeah. of my ears and put, put it in my, my mouth. mouth. Exactly. Yes. So um, we will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. I'm not going to wish for peace. I'm not going to wish I had peace. I should know it by this point, right? And why do I know it? I know it because uh, who lives in me is the Prince of Peace. And when I accepted Jesus into my heart, it gave me access to all that he is, right? And so I have peace because he that lives in me is the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely have peace today. And I value that more than anything because that's all I was ever looking for through drugs and alcohol. It gave me a false sense of peace because I was always worried and anxious. Yeah. So now I'm not worried anymore, right? But all I needed to do was accept God. And he said, here you go. All I had to say was, yes, I surrender. Yeah. So we will know peace, right? If you don't know peace, you miss something. You got to go back. Mm -hmm. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. The feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. We will lose interest in selfish things and gain interest in our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Why? Because I've had a psychic change, a cognitive change in my thinking. Okay, That's why my outlook and my perspective has changed because I've actually had a change in my brain. And this is what I need because that's where the problem centers. And if I don't get that, that's another byproduct of that 12th step. Mm -hmm. I have a spiritual awakening. I get the byproduct of sobriety and of a cognitive or psychic change. Yep. So uh, let's see here. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. Why? Because I trust God now. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. Why? How, do we, how do I intuitively know that? From the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's how I know that. Mm -hmm. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Because I could not stay sober on my own. I had to surrender. I couldn't say I want to dabble a little bit and do this, but I'll give up that. No, he wanted full surrender. He wanted my whole life, my whole heart. Which, what do they say, reservations? Yes, no, no reservations. reservations, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, we suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Are these extravagant promises? We, we think, think not. Right. They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but they will always, not sometimes, not if you're lucky, mm -hmm. always, materialize if we work for them. We don't have time to go through it now, but you guys can take a look. It's a, I, let, I put it in the back of the pocket here. It's the bedevilments that just 30 pages prior, that's where our lives were, right? I was unhappy, feeling unuseful, all of that, and it correlates with each bedevilment, right? I couldn't manage my life, all this stuff, is now replaced by a promise. If I just do this little bit of work, on these in-between pages. Mm -hmm. So um, just like uh, that wraps up the, the reading in the big book. So uh, just um, we're just going to read a couple correlating scriptures here. So just like there's promises all throughout the steps that we receive when we uh, do each step, there are promises all throughout the Bible that we receive when we accept Jesus into our heart. So these are some correlating scriptures of God's promises. Philippians 4, 19, 20. And my God will meet all your needs all. according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All my needs, not some of them. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's what I need because what is my uh, lack of power? That is my problem. So I accept God and now I get power. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. 
Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Just let go and let God. Mm. Isaiah 41, 13. For I am the Lord your God, who takes a hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, for I will help you. Amen. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will be with you. That's why I say, do not think too much about it. Mm. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. Mm. I guarantee it. Yes. Amen. Romans 8, 37 through 39. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even our addictions. Mm -hmm. Not even the things we've done that we thought we could never be forgiven for. Mm -hmm. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Mm -hmm. He loved you when you were doing all that stuff and he still loves you today and he's got a good plan for your life. There's nothing you have done that Jesus did not take up on that cross. Amen. This is what I want you to know. This whole process is about being for, forgiving others, right? The hardest person that I could not forgive was myself. Amen. But Jesus took up all that shame, all Amen. that guilt up on the cross. And it would be a shame to not accept what he has already given you, and that is forgiveness yeah. and love. There's nothing you have done that God does not love you for. He loved me in my addiction, and I know that because I wouldn't be sitting here today if he didn't. Amen. Sorry, I, I had a Holy Spirit de detour there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. 1 John 5, 4. For everyone ha who has been mm. born of God overcomes the world. And, th mm. and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen. Amen. I love that. For everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Mm -hmm. Faith. 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 That's all I need. So how do I become born of God, you ask? How do I get the victory? How do I be an overcomer? It's simple. Faith. Just like this verse says here. Faith to believe Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. It is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. Romans 10.9, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All of these promises that we just read, and these are only a few. Google the promises of God. You'll be going through pages and pages and pages. Right? All these promises can be yours. You just have to have faith. That's all that's required. Faith to say yes to Jesus. So a lot of people associate surrender with losing. That's not what this is. This is about surrendering to win. Victory over drugs and alcohol, it all begins with a decision. The decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. We have no power, but we gain his power when we accept him into our hearts, and it'll be the best decision you ever make. Amen. And that's exactly what we do in our third step. That's the, the first step is surrender, surrendering our life to Jesus. And we never like to wrap up the night without giving you the opportunity to do that and to take your third step. Mm -hmm. Here at Chain Breakers, we believe the way to salvation is as easy as A, B, C. A, we just admit the truth about ourselves, that we're sinners, that we've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. Scripture tells us all have fallen short. God already knows we were going to fall short. Mm -hmm. That's why, B, we believe that Jesus died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. God knew we were going to fall short. And Scripture tells us that only blood can atone for sin. Yep. And that's why he sent his son, because through his blood we're forgiven. So all we got to do is be, believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord and that he died for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. And when we do that, he will raise you from the dead because I needed to be raised from the dead 
C, we just commit ourselves over to his care and protection like we do in this third step right here. Mm -hmm. This is the step process. And I like to add the D in there. We do it today because tomorrow is never promised. So if you would like to do that today, you would like to take that third step and you would like to say, put up that white flag, right? Scripture says the battle belongs to me. We just got to give it to him. Mm -hmm. Give it to him. Mm -hmm. Give up, man. They say the easier, softer way out there. That's the hard way. This oh, is yeah. the easier, softer way. Give is. up the fight. So if you would like to do this, and this is for you if you're watching online, I'm just going to ask everybody to just bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you would like to do that right now, and you would like to surrender, and I just feel this on my spirit, maybe uh, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, but you've strayed. And you're ready to come back. You're ready to come back. Just say something like this, and this is for you if you're watching online. Father in heaven, thank you for loving me. I admit that I am a sinner and that I've done things that are wrong. I believe that you did something about my sin, about my mistakes through your son Jesus when he died on the cross so that I could be forgiven. Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my life and I make you my Lord and Savior. With your eyes still closed and your head still bowed, if this was the day you said yes, I give up the fight. Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. Would you please raise your hand? I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to be able to pray for you, and I want to be able to get you a Bible after the meeting. So if this was the day you said yes to Jesus, would you please raise your hand? Okay, thank you so much, guys. You can open your eyes. And if you're watching online, this was for you too. If uh, this was the day you surrendered or maybe you strayed and you, you came back to the Lord today, please send us a, a PM so that we can uh, congratulate you, we can pray for you, and we can mail you out a Bible. So we are going to shut off the feed now so we can open up the meeting for share. So we will be back next week with Spetsam. Thank you for joining us online, and thank you, everyone, very thank much. Thank you. Thank you.